Welcome back to English 3 Quest 5 Support Part 2. The video stopped and I could not get it to work, so we are beginning again with the Part 2 video. We're going to look at our fourth and final poem, which is When You Forget to Feed Your Gerbil. The mother eats her newborn babies. Pink, furless heads without traces of blood lie on the newspaper with droppings and wood chips. Mother Gerbil sucks at a cloudy dry water bottle that you also forget to feel as though she is dragging on a cigarette. When you finally notice, you finally provide with the terror and guilt of a prisoner's guard, imagining the sound of tin cups like mad scales against her bars. Your gerbil doesn't try to scramble away when you open the metal door, toss in pellets and an old leaf of lettuce. And after she eats, she seems almost happy on her exercise wheel, the one she's gnawed a little plastic off of. You can't bring yourself to clean her cage, tip out the baby's remains. You can't bring yourself to do your homework. It's always your fault when you're a child taking care of a mother. So when we look at this poem and we think about the analysis, we can see that there's two things going on. On the surface level, the poem seems to be about a, a child. The speaker forgot to feed her gerbil and the consequence was that her gerbil got so hungry that it ate her babies. Um, however, there is a parallel plot. We get in the last line, it's always your fault when you are a child taking care of your mother, we get the information that the speaker is responsible for taking care of an adult who is supposed to be charged with nurturing and providing and taking care of her. So again, this is a layer poem. In terms of planning, when you think about a poem that you could write, you also could choose a topic that has a, a strong connection to another very important situation or issue in your life. Again, it doesn't have to be sad. It could be something happy. Now, we've had the opportunity to look in depth at four poems and think about topics that could stem from some of the motifs like perception versus reality in this poem, guilt, and etc. And also topics such as memories, um, in this particular case, responsibility or lack thereof. Um, in the case of the flashcards, we have uh, control. Uh, maybe some stern behavior from the father toward the daughter that makes her somewhat fearful. We have the child who is afraid uh, when he's waltzing with his father in My Papa's Waltz. And in, in the first poem that we read, we have this tension or this uncomfortable situation between father and son, so much so that the son doesn't seem to necessarily appreciate what his father does. So now we're going to plan for our poem. And we're going to plan for our poem by creating a timeline. Let's look at an example of things that could go on your timeline. The first life event that you would want to record on your timeline is your first memory of an important event. If I were actually doing this timeline by writing down information, I would begin here and I would put my first letter to Santa that I could actually read, that I wrote and that I could read. So that was my very first important memory that would go here. I would put my positive memories at the top and my negative memories at the bottom. You'll see what I mean when we do the third example. The next memory should be a favorite memory, a memory that you cherish, that you really love because it stood out in your mind as something glorious that you probably would not experience again. Well, because I have two darling daughters, um, I would have to put two, and those are both positive memories, so I would probably work here to put the first memory and here for the second favorite memory because those are my two favorite memories. Finally, I would want to put a confusing memory, something maybe I was confused about at the time that I understand better now. And here, 
um, at the bottom, I'm going to put, because these memories are in chronological order when you're creating a timeline. The memory that I include here is going to be of a somewhat negative event. This memory will be connected to an unexpected situation in my neighborhood that um, was not meant for my ears. And I overheard it. And now, as an adult, I understand. So I want you to take two minutes to list three memories from your life in chronological order. And because I broke the rule of talking about four, if you need to do four, that's fine. Pause here, please, and complete the list on your timeline of memories. Welcome back. Now that you have your memories, I want you to take time. I want you to list sensory details that are connected to each of your memories. I'll give you an example using my first memory. The first detail that I would include would be the adult pencil that replaced the chubby childish pencil that I used to use before I learned to write letters. That was definitely a sense of pride. And the word pride would be connected to the posture, the erect posture that I had that day once I completed the letter and my head was just up in the air, somewhat tilted back, like I was really something special. Um, I might call attention to how sweaty um, my palms were when I was crafting the letter. So much so that I must have thrown away about 70 sheets of paper, um, just wanting the letter to be perfect. Um, I had already erased so much that there was a, a metal band on the pencil. No more eraser was there. The eraser was non-existent, essentially. Um, so those are some of the things that I would include in my poem. And I wouldn't necessarily... Uh, go overboard but depending on which text from the previous poems I chose to model my poem after I might not use all of those but I definitely wouldn't want to choose too many because I still have to develop those ideas so that the reader understands what happened in that special event now I'm going to ask you to take two to three minutes to list two details per memory on your timeline. You may pause now. Hello. So hopefully you got lots of sensory details that you could include in your poem. Now you are ready to draft because drafting is just getting your ideas down. It's not perfection. You'll have time to revise later. The instructions are included in the learning support folder in Schoology. I chose to model my poem a little bit after my papa's waltz. I did like the rhyme in that poem, so that's what I stuck to. I'll read the draft of my poem and highlight the rhyme scheme. Of course, I would want to go back and include stronger sensory details, stronger verbs, um, call attention maybe to more feeling, sight, sound, maybe develop some more lines, maybe try to work on uh, creating balanced lines in town. In, Maybe I want to work on creating balanced lines in terms of how they sound, cutting out some of the syllables, replacing words so that they would be the same length when you say them aloud. Here we go. Age of four, an official letter writer, practically an adult. No more chubby, childish pencils for me. Once new erasers became non-existent. Not my fault. Overflowing pride, Santa would be filled with glee. Now it was time to transfer my precious cargo to the letterman. Marching like a soldier through gray snow up to my thighs. Sweating palms chase countless sheets into the trash can. Head tilted back despite the wind, not yet aware of the lies. Death could not keep me from the mailbox where I place my material claims. Tears under the spell of the wind froze and stung my cheeks. Today I laughed, pretending that I counted the tale as fun and games, never mentioning the reveal broke my heart, leaving me empty for weeks.
So you have adult and fault, and that's what you call a slant rhyme. It doesn't rhyme exactly, but it's close, and so that's a slant rhyme. Me and glee, man and can, thighs and lies, claims and games, cheeks and weeks. Thank you for going through Quest 5, writing poetry. Good luck with writing your poem. Thanks.